Mitt Romney heads to South Carolina with two wins under his belt. For some analysis, we're very pleased to be joined now by Republican political strategist and former White House counselor for George W. Bush, Ed Gillespie. Hi, Ed. Hi, Ashley. Good to be with you. Ed, Romney becomes the first non-incumbent presidential candidate ever to win both the Iowa caucus and the New Hampshire primary. How significant is that and why? Well, it's pretty significant. Uh, obviously, he did not fare as well in Iowa uh, last time around. He's improved his performance. Uh, he's got ground game uh, all around the country and, and uh, has a good organization in the early primary states. I think we saw that uh, pay off for him in, in Iowa, even though he entered late and certainly in, in New Hampshire. And now South Carolina will be a test for him, I suspect. And uh, if he gets through that and wins and goes three for three in the, in the uh, first primaries, uh, he'll be pretty formidable uh, you know, going forward. If Romney does win South Carolina, does he wrap up the nomination? I wouldn't say he wraps up the nomination at that point, but he certainly becomes a prohibitive favorite. You know, one of the things I've learned is that in politics, nothing's ever really a, a straight line. It's, uh, there's always twists and turns, and uh, there could be twists and turns along the way. But if he were to win South Carolina, go on and, and uh, win Florida as well, uh, you could start to see some real consolidation and, and be very difficult, I think, for uh, someone to, to you know, overtake him at that point. Conversely, no candidate has ever won a party's presidential nomination without winning one of the first two contests. Does that fact put Romney's GOP rivals behind the eight ball in any way? Well, it would definitely put them behind the eight ball, but, you know, there's always firsts. And uh, I don't think just because it hasn't happened before, it couldn't happen uh, in, in 2012. Uh, but there's a reason uh, for that historic pattern, and uh, it, would, it would certainly, you know, be a take a lot to break the historic pattern. Romney's opponents, Newt Gingrich and Rick Perry, are particularly critical of his tenure as CEO of Bain Capital. They accuse Romney of looting companies. Is that accusation damaging in any way, either now or if he does win the nomination and runs against Obama? Well, obviously, Governor Romney is... Uh you know, made a very compelling case that uh, one of the rationales for his candidacy is his understanding of the private sector and job creation. And, and so uh, it's not surprising to me that uh, opponents would try to undermine that asset, try to turn it more into a, a negative. Uh, I think it's harder to do in the Republican Party primary uh, than it would be in the general election. But uh, if Governor Romney is going to be the, if he uh, turns out to be the nominee uh, and this trend continues, uh, it'll be good for him to, uh, you know, to have to parry these, uh, these charges in the, in the primary because there's no doubt that uh, President Obama is going to attack uh, his private sector experience in the general. South Carolina voters traditionally pick more conservative candidates. Romney has been called a moderate. Will that be a liability for him there or will the endorsement of Governor Nikki Haley offset that? Well, I'm sure that Governor Haley's endorsement will help him with uh, conservative primary voters in South Carolina. But if you looked at, again, the uh, data from uh, voters in New Hampshire last night, uh, Governor Romney did very well with self-identified conservative uh, voters in the primary. There's fewer of them as a proportion of the electorate in New Hampshire than there are in the Iowa caucuses. Uh, but but uh, my recollection was that he got about a third of, uh, of conservative uh, voters. He also got about a third of late-breaking voters, of uh, late deciders, uh, which tells you that uh, there, there's not a ceiling there. There's one of the questions has been for Governor Romney is that, you know, the 25 percent he was uh, he was polling in the, you know, consistently in the polls. Obviously, he outperformed that in New Hampshire, uh, but it also showed you that late deciders were willing to give him a uh, a second look. They they didn't uh, rule him out. In fact, uh, many of them, you know, ended up voting for him. Uh, I suspect that's encouraging to uh, Governor Romney and his uh, campaign. University of Virginia political science professor Larry Sabato predicts Romney's Mormon faith could become an issue in South Carolina because the state is no stranger to vicious campaigns. What do you say to that? Well, it's interesting to me when you look at uh, polling data, uh, the, the, any concern about uh, Church of uh, you know, Latter-day Saints or uh, Mormonism uh, it's much more pronounced among self-identified Democrats than Republicans. So I'm not sure that that's going to be uh, uh, a big factor in, in South Carolina. Uh, people felt the same about uh, Iowa, that it would be a big factor uh, in Iowa. And I, I didn't see it showing up as a, as a big factor in Iowa. So uh, I, I know Larry and I, I like him, but I'm not sure I agree with that assessment. 
A Rasmussen poll this week shows most voters think Romney is the only Republican with a decent shot at beating Obama. Is that a factor in South Carolina? I think it's been a factor everywhere for uh, Governor Romney uh, in, the, in the nationwide surveys and then certainly in uh, Iowa and New Hampshire. We saw that uh, voters who, who uh, had as a principal concern the ability to defeat President Obama in November uh, voted for overwhelmingly for Governor Romney. And I think in South Carolina, that's going to be a factor as well. There's, there's very little that matters more to rank and file Republicans right now than getting President Obama out of the White House for a legitimate fear that four more years of, uh, of uh, his administration would do irreparable damage to, uh, to our economy and, and to our country. Uh, so I suspect we'll see it as a, as a factor in South Carolina vote determination and going forward in Florida and Nevada, Michigan, other, uh, other states as well. Another Rasmussen poll shows 46% of voters think the Tea Party will hurt Republicans in this year's elections. What do you say? I don't think that's the case at all. I think the uh, Tea Party voters have brought uh, energy and uh, intensity to uh, Republican Party primaries. I think that they helped us to win control of the House of Representatives uh, in the 2010 elections. Uh, 63 seat gain, historic in nature, and, and that was because of a lot of these new Tea Party voters. I'm glad they're involved in the process. I'm glad that they're uh, voting in Republican Party primaries, not running third party candidates. And I'm glad that they're, you know, giving, giving some uh, steel spine to uh, members of Congress in Washington, D.C. to hold firm against efforts by President Obama and the Democrats to increase spending and raise taxes. If the election were held tomorrow, would Obama be a one-term president? Yes, I believe that President Obama would be a one-term president if the election were held tomorrow. And more importantly, I think he'll be a one-term president when the election is held in November. Uh, people are very concerned about the direction of the country. Uh, they're fearful about uh, their jobs and the economy. Uh, they're concerned about our national security. And uh, while many voters continue to like President Obama personally, they've come to the conclusion that he's in over his head and uh, that he's, uh, as a president, not displaying the kind of leadership we need in these very difficult times. So uh, I'm confident that whomever emerges as the Republican uh, nominee after this process is over, uh, it's going to have a, a better than 50-50 chance of being the next president of the United States. Ed Gillespie, thank you so much, as always. Thanks, Ashley. Great to be with you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.